Welcome to our Tropic Feel Hive review. This is a backpack plus modular ecosystem that can range from 22 all the way up to 46 liters. So we're here to find out, is it awesome? Is it just marketing? Do these features actually work for real world travelers? And what are the real overall pros and cons? Let's dive in. Let's start by talking about the gist of the Tropic Feel Hive backpack. European based Tropic Feel started by making travel shoes and then ended up getting into the backpack game. And let me tell you, they've been killing it. They raised a bajillion dollars on Kickstarter with multiple bags, but this one's sort of being their flagship right now. The gist is a 22 liter bag that with the help of some expansion included features and interesting add-ons can then get you to 46 liters. For the add-ons in this review, we have the camera cube wardrobe, 12 liter smart packing cube and the Fidlock toiletry bag. But it should be noted that all of these interesting features that help to kind of create the identity of the hive are sold separately. The style definitely will appeal to sort of the backpacker crowd types. And it's currently offered in three colors. The bag starts at three pounds, but obviously that will increase as the modular features are added on. This is the bag when it's empty. It basically keeps its shape whether it's empty or it's full. And this is the bag when it's worn on me. For reference, I'm five foot eight. And I'm gonna pack it out throughout this entire review so you can see exactly what it fits. And it comes with Tropic Feels two year warranty. And for all that, the bag as a recording runs around 210 US dollars. But of course that adds up with every feature that you want to add on. So it means if you want the whole kit and caboodle, it'll run almost 500 USD. Now here's the deal. I'm gonna run you through everything so you can figure out whether this is the travel system for you, because it's really a system, and whether you wanna pay that price. But please remember, if you do, and you're gonna make a purchase, or you just wanna check out some more information, we do ask that you do so using the first link in the description. Reason being, that link makes sure that you get the best price, and we oftentimes have discount codes. And that link helps to support the Nomads Nation YouTube channel, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you. Okay, let's start by talking about the front of the Tropic Feel Hive backpack. First up, branding, pretty anonymous. The black on black is subtle. The only place that the actual Tropic Feel name is, is on the back, so I appreciate that. On the different colors though, the branding will be a little bit louder. Quickly talk about some of these materials. Most of the materials on this pack are recycled, but they're not also 100% specified for what's what. We've got some nice materials like YKK PU coated zippers and Duraflex hardware, but the actual exterior materials, I'm not as sure about. They seem fine. They're good to the touch. I've reviewed like 300 bags at this point. So like, I know these aren't crap materials, but I also know they're not name brand materials. This is some sort of nylon, maybe nylon polyester blend, and it should be highly weather resistant. And here we have some sort of PU nylon, which is significantly more water resistant and also helps to give the bag a nice aesthetic. Overall with the materials and just sort of the everything of this bag, you got to keep in mind that really what you're paying for are the features. If it's important to you to get the best constructed bag possible and the highest quality materials possible, this is probably less of a contender. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's talk about this front pouch, right? So you can see right here, we have one, two, three, four pieces of hardware. These are the male parts for obvious reasons, that connect to the add-on, which has the one, two, three, four female parts. These are made by Fidlock. Fidlock makes some of the best magnetic hardware in the game. No, they make the best magnetic hardware in the game. And the concept is simple. External carry, right? You got 22 liter bag, and then you wanna put this guy on. Then boom, you added more capacity, and in a way that is on the outside of the bag and very accessible. Some pros and some cons with this. Pro number one is I love how easy this is to take off, right? We've got these pull tabs on the fit locks right here that make it just sort of pop it off, very satisfying. And also these fit locks, they're easy to put back into place. Also, not having to take up access in your main compartment is nice as well, so you can carry more stuff. But that can also cause a security problem for some of you. For me, like if it's my toiletry kit, I'm not gonna be too worried about it because if somebody steals my toothbrush and my mouthwash, and they need it that bad, I guess you could just have it. But I would definitely be more hesitant to carry my tech gear on the outside of my bag. A real quick look into this toiletry kit. Very basic, a couple of compartments, some waterproof materials, good for some basic toiletries. And when you get to your destination, you can hang it up. Don't overthink it, it gets the job done. And obviously, it's a part of the system, so it works in unison with the entire hive modularity awesomeness that's being presented to you. Speaking of that, let's talk about the second feature, which is this guy right here, the smart packing cube. I'll be the judge of how smart you are, but let me explain. So you have this pouch right here, which has a nice expansion to it, right? So you can use this as like a pocket. You can throw things in there, like, I don't know, put an umbrella in there. And within this pocket, we have this guy. 
It's like a little net. This could do a few things. If you don't buy the smart packing cube, you can go ahead and clip this into place up top. And you can just use it for extra storage, right? Like if you wanna throw a tripod in here, like a big old tripod, it's more likely not to fall over now, right? It's gonna kind of keep it in place. You can put dirty laundry in there, right? Like, and I like it, I like this thing, cause I could, I'm already, my gears are churning for all the different ways that I could use it. But the best way to use it is with a smart packing cube, right? Cause it, as a packing cube, you sort of load it up, put all your stuff in there, right? And the smart part, I assume, is the fact that it compresses. So you see along the circumference, you got the expansion, so you can go ahead and load this up with a bunch of clothes, compress it, therefore maximizing space. And then we have external modular accessory number two, where you're putting this in this sleeve and then securing it with the net. Now, a couple of points. First of all, it's a little bit fidgety to get these things on and off. It definitely works. Easier to put on and a lot more difficult to take off. It's very common though for hardware like this. Thing number two, I'm not packing this out right now, but I did earlier. And I can say that it works really well as a packing cube, but you're gonna run into some serious compromises into how it can fit in here. Now, the good news is that the bottom expands, right? So you can fit a rhinoceros. Now you can fit like a lot of stuff in there, right? But unfortunately, this material is not stretchy. Right, so we got the stretchiness here, but as I read on some fantastic Reddit uh, threads, this should have been stretchy as well, right? Because then if you have this packing cube, the smart packing cube, and it's really packed and bulked out and you throw it in there, you wanna secure it. This is bulked out, it's getting tight, you can't do that. This should have been an elastic spandexy material that you could just clip into place and it would have allowed you to then have more versatility with your packing. Unfortunately, it doesn't which then does limit the usage of this. It doesn't render it incapable of being used. You can use it. You just gotta be careful of the girthiness that you're sort of getting this to. Let's talk about the middle of the Tropic Feel Hive. Side number one, we have a water bottle holder. And what I said about this not being stretchy and being a con, I extend to this water bottle holder. Cause you can see I got a 23 ounce Columbia water bottle here, like a medium sized bottle and it, oh, I mean, I would not take this with me. It, I, I'd be so annoyed by that. Yeah, some stretchier material would have been nice. Maybe just a different construction in general. It looks nice, it looks clean, it looks flush as f Let's see if my 16 ounce Lark can fit in there. Yep, so you need something a lot thinner. The 16 ounce Lark LARQ, the dimensions seem perfect. So if you're wondering what size water bottle is perfect for this bag, it's the 16 ounce Lark or something with the same exact dimension. Other side, we have two compression straps. This bag's not gonna compress though, and you're not gonna need to at 22 liters, but this can be good for external carry. Let's say you have like a tripod or something. You wanna throw the tripod on the side, clean it into place, that's what those are for. And I should say that a lot of this hardware too is metal. These buckles, metal, this buckle, metal. Plastic on the back, but still the buckles being metal just kind of gives the bag a more premium feel, which is appreciated at this price point. Now let's talk about the bottom of the bag, which has this little zip right here, which you can find the kangaroo pouch. These accents, they're not stopping. And this feature, unlike the other features, actually comes with the bag, and I'm a big fan of it, because A, it's included, but B, it's like, it's tucked underneath, zipped up, out of sight, out of mind. But when you're traveling, and you got an extra pair of shoes with you, right? It's like a business trip. You need four extra liters of space. You throw them in there, and you're good to go. Or are you? I actually haven't tested this yet. All right, so let's get this figured out. Let's see. I have to, I should preface, too. I'm a small dude. Five foot eight, size nine sneakers. These are my size nine Pumas. Kind of, sort of making it work. Work. Let's see if we can get them on. I think that now that I'm sort of playing with it, it works, but you ain't gonna be able to bring like your freaking Nike trainers, right? Mm, yeah, we're making it work. Probably a spot for a smaller or thinner pair of shoes. Think sandals, maybe a pair of Crocs. Crocs are kind of bulky, but that's what I'd say this is. And this sort of brings up like another point of this bag in general. You're thinking, oh my God, there's so many cool freaking features that I can use, and there are. But these features are highly prescriptive. And because of all that's happening with the bag, a lot of these features have to make compromises because this bag can't do it all. So case in point right here, it kind of fits the shoes, but like it's not gonna fit much bigger shoes, but it, it does work, but it's tight. And everything's just gonna be a little bit on the tight side because all these features are kind of competing with each other for space and for love and attention. But overall, mine's working. Love the kangaroo pouch and a nice touch. Try to feel out of these elastic parts on the bottom where you can additionally carry more external things. Tripod, yoga mat, camping gear, you name it. Slide it on there, good to go. For the sake of a cleaner review, I'm going to take this off though so I can keep the bag standing upright. Oh, and standing upright too, I can't believe I didn't bring this up. This bag stands. Huge perk in my opinion. Bags that stand, especially when you're traveling, dude, like it's just, it's the best. You're at the airport, you don't want the bag like falling over on the gross ground, right? Self-standing bags absolutely rock. On the top of the middle, we have this pocket right here, which is sort of like a quick access 
pocket for your glasses. And I say that because of the material used in here. It's like a super soft anti-scratch microfiber material. So I got my shades, I pop them right there. Nice safe spot. And you have another zipper pocket. Good for some of these smaller bits of gear. So maybe I'll throw my AirPods there. Keep my jams close at hand. Now, it's all been fun and games, but let's get into the main compartment and see what you got. Cause I got some things to say. We have a full clamshell opening. I'm a big fan of that. Clamshell like pops all the way open, right? So you have full access and a full sort of view on all of your gear. On the front side of the main compartment panel, we have like the tech compartment. And on the back side, we have a bit more storage. Let's talk about the tech compartment. Not crazy about it. Here's why. I am an online entrepreneur. I got a YouTube channel and websites and I'm building my own backpack. What? He's building his own backpack? He reviews backpacks. He's building his own. It's true I am. Quick self-plug. Not only do I review backpacks, but I'm actually building my own. And I travel the world and go to the States and go to Vietnam where my factory is and back to Hong Kong. And I'm documenting the entire process. And I'm getting you, my whole community, involved in the process so you can vote on some of the key features. So if you want to learn more about my building a backpack project, just take a look at the second link in the description below. That'll show you where we are in the project and how you can get involved. But anyways, as a digital nomad keyboard warrior, my last Laptop's the most important thing in the world to me, you know, third to my wife and my Fender guitar, right? So that means I want my laptop as protected as possible, and I just don't think that this is the most protective solution out there. It's not that it's bad, it's just that when you have a laptop in the front, it's just not as ideal as if it were in the back. It's still okay there, don't get me wrong. But when it's in the back, usually a lot of bags will have a laptop compartment where it's like an entire area. And it's against your back, so it's nice. It's a nice flat area. Here though, as the bag is packed out, this will end up pushing on the bag a little bit and you can see like problems that might arise. They might not, but they might. It doesn't specify what size laptop fits, but you can see right here my 13 inch MacBook Pro fits with plenty of space to spare. I would say probably up to a 16 inch MacBook Pro, but I would reach out to Tropic Feel if you're interested to make sure that it fits your specific laptop. Once the laptop's in there, it is secured into place via Velcro. And then we got these two compartments right here. Good for tech stuff, I assume. Computer charger on the bottom. Oh yeah, meant to be. Some extra charging wires on the top. Now you're talking my language. You're not gonna get a lot of tech gear in there, but it will handle a decent amount. And then into the actual, this part of the main compartment. We just got these two interesting pockets up here, which i never seen before. I don't hate it. Let's test them out. Let's see if we can fit a bulky Travel adapter, like a glove, very nice. Or it can fit thinner items, like if you wanna keep your wallet in there, super secure, right? Maybe like a backup credit cards, a little secure area. And then the actual main compartment, which is pretty minimalist. Not a lot of stuff going on there. Could be the perfect spot for an interesting feature. And that's where the wardrobe system comes into play. Oh my God, I'm exhausted. This review is long. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm not gonna make the wardrobe system chat super long, but just know that before we shot this video, my videographer, Margaret, and myself, we kind of tested around with it. And you know what? It works. It works nicely. It's not gonna change your life necessarily. And it doesn't have the clean sort of compression as some other packing cubes do. But I will say, it works. And the compression obviously allows you to save more space in the main compartment. Now it should be noted to actually get the wardrobe system in there, we gotta expand the bag, baby. We got the expansion on the back with some inspirational quotes on the side. Beyond travel. That's very annoying to me, just my opinion. Do you like the beyond travel quote on the side? Or am I just a Grinch? Let me know in the comments below. And then you just take the cube and you throw it on in. And if voila, what would have been this tall is now compressed down to this tall. And you can compress it even more. And you can see sort of how this is working, right? Now here's the problem is like, I'm starting to get nervous with my laptop, right? Because this is pushing on this. I'm like, please don't crack, please don't crack. And I'm just like, yeah. It's a tough one for me to recommend for people who Ha travel with laptops. If you don't travel with a laptop though, like this is really nice. But if you do, mm. And the cool thing though with this wardrobe system is once you get to your destination, simply do one of these. Oh yeah. And you do one of those and voila, home sweet home. That's cool. Hell, I might even just buy this thing without the bag and just, just use this on my travels. Let's talk about the back of the Tropic Feel Hive backpack. Starting with the top, we got a top handle, pretty basic. Not a lot of TLC was put into this, but it gets the job done. A little tight, but you know, you can carry it for periods of time, in theory. Let's talk about comfort though. This bag has clearly made comfort a priority. Did they nail it? I don't know, but they definitely tried. And you can tell because we have 
load lifters, contorted shoulder straps, ventilation on the back panel, a strong sternum strap, and a waist belt. And when all of those are combined together, you should in theory get a pretty comfortable backpack experience. Let's find out. Now, I don't have this thing super packed out. Remember, it's in 22 liter mode, but I've learned over the years to sort of figure out what the comfort will be like. So these load lifters, they get the job done. It's not lifting a ton of load, but it's, it's, it's enough to take the edge off. One thing to note about the load lifters, we got a little bit extra dangle going on here. There's nowhere to stow that dangle, unfortunately. So these might be flipping and flopping around. The shoulder straps themselves, definitely on the denser side, not on the heavy padding side. I constantly use like Air, AER, a very big backpack brand, as a sort of comparison, because they have like these super beefy, donkey, chunky ass shoulder straps. These though are not like that. They seem pretty average in terms of materials and Padding. I have not traveled with this long term, so I cannot speak to the long term comfort of them. I feel like they'd be on the average to good side. But I'm curious if you have used this bag, please let me know in the comments below. Like, how comfy is this bag? From there, we got the sternum straps. Sternum straps are great, especially when they are adjustable and you snap it into place and therefore redistribute weight to your torso and therefore take weight off of your lower back. This is a solid sternum strap. Whoa, they give you a lot of room. Like if you got a big old chest, I'm talking like an Arnold Schwarzenegger type like chest. And it should be noted that the sternum strap is not removable. I'm sorry, well, technically it is removable. Anything's removable. It's like a tooth. A tooth is removable, but you're not gonna be able to put that tooth back in. That's like the sternum strap. So if you take it off, it's kind of a permanent decision. And you are Duraflex, yes, top-notch hardware. Now further down though, while I thought the sternum strap ended up doing pretty well, this waist belt, I've seen this before, where it's not really a waist belt as much as it is a belly belt, yeah. Belly button, oh, wow, we're, we're north of the belly button. I got about two and a half inches north of the belly button. Good thing we're still about six inches south of nipples, but you can see what's happening here. Typically, a travel backpack of this size will be longer, right? And then therefore, the weight is a little bit more distributed, so then the waist belt is in the waist area, which in theory helps redistribute the weight, right? And I'm only five foot eight, remember, so if you got even a longer torso than me, I see this a lot, and yet again, kind of a recurring theme with this bag. It's giving you so much but when it tries to give you so much, not everything's gonna work perfectly. But I do like the fact that this does exist and it comes included with the bag. We've got the dangle holders so we can stop the dangle. But let's just say you're like, dude, I don't want that thing. The good news is, you don't need to keep it, wow. Some minds exploded just then on the channel because they had no idea that was possible. Thank you, I'll be here all week. And you can see that Tropic Feel has made a hip belt, a waist belt, that can transform into a sling or a fanny. Amazing use of space and resources. This thing, super basic, just got a storage panel there and a smaller one in front. And we've taken something and made it into something else. And it works pretty nice. But like all things, this ain't gonna be the best sling in the world. You can't expect it to, it's a freaking hip belt, right? But just keep that in mind. This sling compared to the Bellroy Light sling, you can't compare them. This is a masterpiece of a sling. This is a hip belt that they were able to turn into a sling. But I think it works nicely. It is taken off and re-secured via Velcro. And then voila. Real, one more note on the shoulder straps. We have some external lash points here and carry points. You got this D-ring right there. And then these guys, so you can clip carabiners onto it and carry things externally on your bag. We got this little lash point there as well. The nylon webbing itself feels average-ish, but I do like this back panel. It felt nice and firm on my back. We got these cuts for increased ventilation. It looks smart and it comes with a couple features as well. First up is a hidden wallet pocket on the back or good for a passport, great for traveling, nice and discreet and safe because it's pressed against your back. A side handle if you wanna carry it on the side. You're not really gonna go into briefcase mode with this bag, so don't like, don't think of that. But like when you're on the plane or you're traveling in the airport, these, these handles are just, they just come in use so often. One more thing on the back, we have this guy, this elastic band, which is a two in one -er. First of all, it acts as a luggage pass-through holder. Not one that's gonna keep your bag super in place, right? You know, you're moving your luggage around, it's, it might be doing one of those. But it also can unclip and help you sort of stow away your shoulder straps, which keeps them cleaner. It's nicer when you're putting the bag over top. Let's talk about the pros and the cons of the Tropic Feel Hive backpack. Pro number one is just the whole concept. If you don't mind dishing out the cash, you're getting a very well thought out travel system. 
that will give you a ton of versatility. Pro number two, just sort of emphasizing on that, the ability to go from 22 to 46 liters, that's incredible. I've never really seen a bag do that ever. And pro number three, while the, this little net thing should have been stretchier, I still like its existence as there's a lot that you can do with it even without buying the add-ons. But I got cons, here they come. Con number one, you're paying for a travel system and features. You're not getting necessarily the highest quality materials. So th those are, the materials are, they're good. They're not like exceptional for the price point. Con number two, the water bottle holder, kind of a miss in my opinion. And con number three, that laptop placement is just tough for me. It's, it's, it's a really tough sell for me. It's okay if I don't overpack the bag, but the second this thing starts getting packed out, I am, I'm, I'm, I'm just not cool with it. But if you're still watching this, like you might be like, dude, that's a system. And I'm all about the system, I'm in. I can get down on some of it. And if you're like me and you kind of want to check out the price and maybe possibly put it in a car and possibly make, hit that purchase button, then just remember that we do ask that you do so using the first link in the description. Remember that link makes sure that you get the best price and it also helps to support the Nomads Nation YouTube channel, which we greatly appreciate. Thank you. Okay, I'm done talking about you. If you're still here and you want some alternative recommendations though for bags that might better suit your needs, let's discuss. Alternative recommendation number one is the Nomatic Travel Pack. This is gonna be for you if you're loving the features and expansion that Tropic Feel is bringing to the table, but you want something that has a little bit more of a professional and business aesthetic. It's another iconic and slightly controversial travel pack. And to learn more about it, take a look at the description below and you'll find a link to our full review. Alternative suggestion number two is the Boundary Supply Errant Pro. This is for you if you're just like, dude, there's so many features and I want like even more features. That's what Boundary Supply does. They're like design engineer wizards. They got, they just like, just, just if that interests you, just watch the review, you won't regret it. And alternative recommendation number three is the Air Travel Pack 3 regular and small. This is for you if you're like that, I thought that I wanted this, but that was way too complicated. Oh my God. Is there just like a travel bag out there that's just like super comfy and cozy and minimalist and gets the job done with incredibly high quality materials? Yes, there is. And to learn more about the Air Travel Pack 3, simply watch this video right here. This was a long review. So if you got any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know in the comments below. I personally respond to every single one myself. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Aaron. This is Nomads Nation and we'll catch you next time.